check sound check or mic check sound it's one of those and it's checked and we're good so i think it's a mic check let's put the firefly 3 on a synology nas and you're going to start by going to firefly-ii.org so that's their website firefly3.org i don't know what org stands for so let's go to documentation probably organization right and then how to guides and then we're going to do the we're going to do the full thing so this is going to include the data importer so let's click on data importer how to install using docker and this is going to install both firefly 3 and the data importer that's what it says right here so if you just do firefly 3 that only installs it without the data importer uh, you i think it's pretty logical they don't let you install the data importer without firefly 3. so we're going to come down here to where it says docker compose this is going to be this is a bit more of an advanced docker install than a lot of my previous videos so Get ready for that. Strap yourself in. Uh, we're going to download four different files and we have to rename them. So in these instructions, it's going to say, not going to say, it does say, grab the docker compose importer.yaml, but it wants us to rename it to just docker compose.yaml. So I'm going to download all of these to my computer in a folder called Firefly 3. That's not important, but I'm going to drag all of those files into the Synology NAS. So I'm going to start by getting this guy, save as, and I'm just going to chop off the importer part. So now it just says docker compose.yaml as it says in the instructions. Next, it wants us to download .env.example and rename this to .env. So we're going to, this, the, the name is here is going to be a little bit different for right now. So I'm going to save this as env. I'm actually going to save this as .yml. And I'm not going to put a period in front because if I do that, it's going to hide it from myself and make it difficult for me to grab. So it's just env.yml. And I'll show you why I'm going to name all these env files with .yml when we get into Synology. So yes, use yml. And then env.example, we will download this and it wants us to rename that to importer.env. So I'm going to save you as importer.env.yml. Use yml. Woosa yml. All right, final is the database.env and it wants us to name that to db.env. So we will right click, save as, and I'll type in db.env env and then dot yml and save <clears throat> got all the files that i need keep this so we're going to keep this page open though because we're going to have to come back to it so let's go to the synology nas we're going to open up container manager which if you don't have go to package center type in container manager and it will show up and if I'm also going to use the text editor, so you can just type in text, grab the text editor, and you are good. If Container Manager doesn't show up for you in the Package Center, that means it's not available on your model of NAS, but Google around, there's probably a way to install it on your Synology. So let's pop into, we're going to start by going to File Station. It's already different than a lot of my other videos. And then I'm going to come into, um, then I'm going to come into Docker. So I want to go into the Docker share, and I'm going to delete this. Pretend that you never saw this. There was never a Firefly 3 folder in here. Let's create a new folder called Firefly 3. You can name this folder whatever you want, but I bet this is pretty close to what you want to name it. Firefly 3. And now I'm going to drag all four of those YAML ENV files that I downloaded. Yeah, we can overwrite because there's nothing in here. Got everything. And here's the reason that we I renamed everything to .yml. If I open... Oh, Docker Compose was a YML, so that's good. But these ENV files I renamed because if I open them, you see how a lot of this text is light gray and some of it's black? Basically, the black text is the important text and the light gray are... Are, it's either notes or sections of code that have been commented out that you don't necessarily need, but you could add if you want to. Um, yeah, and you can open up a text file. If you just name it .env, it actually won't open in the text editor. So let's go back to the instructions and see what else it wants us to do. So edit files. If you save all the example files and change nothing, it's not going to work. Do a couple things. All right, let's do these things. So first, change db password in the .env file to something else, a nice password. All right, let's do that. So we want to go into the env file and change this parameter, db password. I'm actually going to copy this, go into the NAS, and then env.yml is that file. So I'll double click it, search, find db password. And it wants us to change it to a secret Firefly password. Actually, it wants a nice password. That's, that's pretty nice, actually, if the whole world didn't know what it is. But I'm going to go type in, I'm just going to do bitwarden password generator and make ourselves a nice password. And I think 32 characters is pretty nice. I'm going to regenerate it three times because everybody knows if you don't regenerate a password at least three times, it's no good. Copy it to clipboard. I'm also not going to use any special characters. You can if you want. I always get afraid that it's going to mess up uh, stuff in Docker. Like it's going to read character that it shouldn't. Anyways, I'll copy this to clipboard, come back here and paste it. So right after the equal sign, I keep the equal sign and I paste it here and I've got my new nice password that only me and everybody who watches this YouTube video know. I'm going to copy this because I actually need it here in a second. And I'm going to make a couple other changes that they don't go over while I'm in here. Let me scroll back up to the top. I'm kind of doing this out of order. So first, TZ stands for time zone. You don't have to change this, but if you want to, you can. So I'm just going to type in America-new underscore York because I'm on the Eastern time zone. 
If you're in the Midwest, you could type in Chicago, West Coast, Los underscore Angeles, London. You could do Europe underscore London, but they've got a link here for, yeah, you can't even see it because it's all like right, but they've got a Wikipedia link if you want to know the exact names for those time zones, if you're interested in doing that. Maybe don't do it for now though, because it could screw things up. And then I'm going to come down. That's all that I'm going to change in the ENV. So I'm going to file, save, close. Next, you are saying change the MySQL password in db.env to the same value. So it wants that same password that we're using here in the env file in this db.env. So let's go back here. So we'll do db.env.yaml and we're going to paste in that secret password that we put in the regular env file. So those passwords have to match up or this will not work. And I'll click file, save out of there. And then I need to make a couple of more changes. So now this is gonna tell you to change Firefly 3 URL and the vanity URL. I'm not gonna do that. And I would suggest that you also don't do that. We're gonna leave those blank because this will allow us to manually input the location of the app. And that's what we wanna do. That doesn't make any sense. Probably shouldn't, but it'll make sense when we get there. So let's go back to our files and open up importer.env.yaml, I believe is what I want. If I scroll down a little bit, there's another time zone in here, I believe. So right here, I'm gonna change this. Again, you don't have to do this and I would I would suggest not doing this right now. I'm not, I don't, I don't really think it's gonna make a big difference in your server. I think you can change the time zone in there, but just something I like to do. I'm actually looking for something else and it's not in here. Let me go to env.yaml, maybe it's in here. Here we go. I can't believe I messed this, it's right at the beginning. So the encryption key for your sessions, keep this very secure and it wants you to change this. It's not listed in the instructions, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyways. So it's right here on, yeah, if you're in the env.yaml file or .env, app key is what we're looking for. It's very close to the top and we're gonna replace this with a random 32 string of characters. So I'm gonna go to the Bitwarden password generator and click regenerate a bunch of times because I already have the characters set to 32 from before. Bet you were wondering why I chose 32. Copy that password and I will paste it right after the equal sign. It's exactly 32 characters. If I highlight it, I can see that it is 32 characters. No, I can't. All right, never mind. I thought that I could. But that is that. I'm going to file, save, close out. And then the last changes we need to make are in docker-compose.yaml. So I will come in here and this we got to make a couple changes. I don't want to use any what are known as Docker volumes. So if we come down here, not very far, we'll go to services app, Firefly 3 core. There's a section called volumes. And then you see this Firefly 3 upload colon and then another volume. Volume is just a storage location. When you see this colon, what's to the left is the, I believe it's called host volume. And what's to the right is the container volume. So you don't typically have to worry about what's to the right. Sometimes you do, like if you're installing Jellyfin or some media servers, you can change that. But most cases you don't. And in this case, we don't. So to the left, we want to give it a file, uh, a folder path. So I'm just going to type in period forward slash. And period forward slash means whatever folder that I'm in is where I'm making, is where I'm looking for the folder. And our Docker Compose folder, or where I am is where this Docker Compose.yaml is, and that's here, Docker Firefly 3. So I need to make that folder, otherwise it's gonna give me an error. So I'm gonna copy that text, come into my finder, create a folder. I'll just paste that name, Firefly 3 Upload, and hit OK. And it's gotta be exact, it has to match exactly. So now that folder exists. Port, so port 80 is already taken by Synology. You cannot use it. So we're gonna change it to something else. I'm just gonna do something simple. So I'll just type in 901. <clears throat> And then we'll come down a little bit to DB. So DB is short for database. So MariaDB is a Maria database. And this again has a volume, but you notice it doesn't have a folder in it. So, or it's not laid out like a folder. So I'm gonna type in period forward slash. I'm gonna copy this text right up until the colon and I'm gonna make that folder as well. So I'll create folder Firefly 3 DB. It will work if you remove this and that creates what's known as a Docker volume, but I will let you research Docker volumes on your own. I don't like, I don't love to use them in Synology though, at least for these tutorials, because you can't really get rid of them without getting into the command line without SSHing in. And also I like knowing where all my stuff is. So this way you know where these folders are and it makes it really easy to back them up. So now let's come down here to importer and then ports. 81 will work, but there are other programs that like to use that. So I'm just, I wanna keep it similar to the other one. So I'm gonna type in port 902. All right, and then I just need to delete the volume section here. Delete, and I should be good. That should be everything that I need. So I'll file, save, click out of here. And now I just need to rename all these env files because remember, they're supposed to be dot file name dot env. So let's rename you. Let's start with db.env, db.env.yaml. Not great at talking. So I'm gonna delete the dot yaml and I'm just gonna put a period at the very front. So dot db.env. And I'll do the same thing with the other two. So this env.yaml will be dot env. 
env. Now we'll get rid of the yaml and importer.env.yaml will just change to dot importer.env.yaml. And I'll click OK. And if you ever need to edit these, you can just, just right click, rename it to dot yaml again, and you can open up it in the text editor. You could also do dot txt, but all the text will be black and difficult to read. So I'm going to click cancel. I'm sure, I want to leave. So everything is named correctly. Got my Docker Compose YAML, and I've got my Firefly. Fire, Firefly? Fire, yes, Firefly 3 folders. Let's exit out of here. Pop in a container manager. Let's make the magic happen. Project, create. Project name, I'm going to type in Firefly-iii. For path, I'm going to set path to that Firefly 3 folder I made earlier. And then it's going to ask if I want to use an existing Docker Compose.yaml, and I'm going to hit OK. It's already a lot different than my other ones, right? <clears throat> There's no wrong way of doing that, by the way. You could do all of your Docker Composes in a text editor, like Cot Editor is one that I like to use on Mac, because you can make it, format it as a YAML, and save it in there, and do the same thing. Sorry, I feel like I was rambling there. So this is all correct, because we just edited it. I'll click Next. I do not need to set up a web station, and start the project once it is created. I'm going to click Done. So now it's going to pull all the containers and files that it needs to run. You will hopefully get an error code zero. Not an error code. Does it say error code? It says code zero. And then you'll get a little message saying that it was successfully built and you will have Firefly and the importer. The only thing is it does take a little bit for it to start up. So even once it's completed, the importer will probably come up pretty quickly, but the actual Firefly 3 core program might you might want to give it like five or ten minutes. It does take a little while. So don't don't be too afraid if it's not popping up immediately. All right, we got error code zero and we should be good. So I'll hit close. Now to access Firefly, we're going to use those port numbers. So remember when we typed in 901 and 902, if I go to project and I double click Firefly 3 YAML configurations, uh, if you forgot what numbers you put in, you can put them here. If you just use the same ones as me, though, it makes it easy. 902 was for the importer, and 901 is for the core program. Come and click on containers. I can see all four of them are up. So cron jobs, the database, the core, and the importer. All good. So to access it, you're just going to type in the IP address of your Synology NAS colon 901. Or the and you're also going to do the IP address of your Synology NAS colon 902 to access the importer. So let's start with the importer because that usually fires up first. Hey, we got it. We're all good. So we got the Firefly importer. And now I think I just have to wait on regular Firefly. Yeah, this one's still, it's still launching. So again, like I said, I'm not over exaggerating when I say five or 10 minutes, really give, give it a little bit before you start going back and destroying your project and trying to figure out what you did wrong. Cause that can happen with Firefly 3. It's a little tricky. Check it out. We got Firefly 3 working. That is great. So you now got Firefly 3 working on your Synology NAS and you've got the data importer. So I'll walk you through it real quickly. We'll just start by typing in your email address. I'll type in volume data 21 at gmail.com. I think that is my actual Gmail. And then mm, password, uh, you need a very secure password. So if you try and type in like pass, pass, you are gonna get an error. It's gotta be at least 16 characters, make it secure. So get at least 16 characters, regenerate, copy, got a password. Definitely make sure that you save this password somewhere. <clears throat> Let's register and we're in. No, don't ever save. So in order to use the data importer, I would go through, definitely go through their documentation. There's a lot of documentation on Firefly 3. I know it can get a little bit confusing, especially for a Synology user, understand that Firefly 3 is made for everyone and all different systems. So it's kind of difficult for them to try and figure out, you know, everybody's system specs and Docker setup. And not everybody even uses Docker, but there's a lot of stuff on here that you can figure out. Um, they got a lot of good reference guides and things like that if you're trying to find info. But I'll quickly walk you through how to set up the importer because I had a lot of problems setting this up with Docker until I kind of figured out I just didn't need to do a couple steps in their instructions. So come down to Options, Profile, and then go to OAuth, and we're going to create a new client. I think all these instructions are here in the importer too. So you can follow this stuff and it tells you how to do it. And then for the name, I'm just going to type in importer. Redirect URL is here. So the callback URL for this installation is 192.168.8640. Yours will be different. So I'm going to add that here. And you need to uncheck confidential. Create. And you will be good to go. So you see here it says client ID 3. I'm just going to type in client ID 3 here. Oh, it also needs your Firefly 3 URL. So go back to your Firefly install, copy that path. So it should just be HTTP colon slash slash the IP address of your Synology NAS colon 901. And I don't know if I did this already, but if you don't know the IP address of your NAS, just come up to the upper right hand side where it says widgets. I know I'm in, don't judge me because I'm in a warning status. Definitely don't do that next. Uh, 
and then where it says LAN 1, you should be able to click that, and depending on how many different, I think, Ethernet ports you have on your Synology NAS, one of these should be it. And yours probably starts with 192.168-something-something. So that is how you can figure out your Synology NAS's IP address. It'll be one of those guys. And then come back to, I'm coming back to the importer. I will just hit Submit, and then Authorize, and you should be good to go. So now your importer set up, your Firefly set up, you can type in all of your expenses and see how much money you have definitely wasted making a home lab. I'm kidding. <clears throat> making a home lab is very, my opinion, very worthwhile. So there you go. I will say this was one of the trickier setups. So if you got it working, that's awesome. <clears throat> make sure that if you're having problems, you really need to make sure that everything is named exactly correctly. And if you do for some reason need to shut this stuff down and you're like, I just need to restart, start from scratch, you can go into Container Manager, right click your project and click Stop. And it should just let you delete it and that'll clear out all the containers. So while that's stopping, the other thing that you need to do is next step is go to file station, go into that Firefly 3 folder and you see how you have these two folders. You can delete them or just go in and delete everything and keep the folders if you want. Um, so you have those right names, but everything inside of these folders should also be deleted. You probably don't have anything in upload, but what's inside the DB folder, you want to delete that too before you try and get the stuff back up. But yeah, so you stop your project and then delete it. It'll delete all the containers and then you should be good to start from scratch. That is how you get Firefly 3 and the data importer on a Synology NAS. Good luck to you.